just as a like a bit of an intro, um, I guess how many of you have heard of Super Six as a as a concept? Uh, one, two, two people. Except one of us, our employee. Uh, <laughs> <That's still laughs> good great. Uh, so, uh, so I went. I went asked the follow, which is then how many of you? How many use it? So nobody's heard of Super Six. Um, Super Six is a. Um, do you want to move on? Sorry. Uh, yeah. uh, so it's a. Um, it's a game played on Saturdays. The idea is it's a. I guess a, an idea to, to, to migrate people onto the onto the platform. So it's to get people in, interested in in betting and to gambling. Uh, it's a it's a game that people play. It's encouraged to play in the in the workplace and uh, and with friends. Uh, you so pick. It's, uh, worth, it's worth playing as well. You can win a million pounds <laughs> and it's entirely free. Yes. Yeah. So you I, can. I play, but I can't imagine the conversation should one of us actually win. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Um, so yeah, predict the six correct scores uh, and then and then win some money. Um, so one one point two million players a week. This used to be run by Sky, and it's, it's one of their sort of key key products to to drive uh, new business into the uh, organisation. Uh, obviously, betting and game uh, gambling is, uh, uh, is a is a fickle market. People move around a lot. They're looking for what is the new, what is an interesting interesting game. And we'll talk a little bit about what we then moved on to after this. As so, uh, people love Super Six briefly, and then have now moved on to the next thing. So. Um, entries at uh, 100 a second and, and logins at about 350 a second. And we'll talk again a little bit later about the, uh, the auto scaling we did to, to cope with this. So it was run by Sky previously, uh, and actually two of our founding, uh, no, four of our founding directors uh, yeah. worked, on, uh, worked on the product when it was still with Skybet, uh, and then came across to Infinity Works, and, we, and we've now migrated across. So Super 6 England uh, was migrated across as a um, basically sort of pick it up, try and put it into a, into a new platform, move it into AWS, make it a bit more efficient, make it a bit more uh, scalable and deployable. But, um, but ultimately, it was the same product, and we had to, to manage that. But at the same time, uh, we started talking about um, Italy and, and Germany and running an international service for, for Italy and Germany. So that was, that was built basically the same sort of thing, but from the ground up to be a, to be a new service. Uh, we went live for Euro 2016. Uh, it was a sort of a relatively soft launch, uh, actually not that soft in the in the in the, in the end. Um, but ran through that, and then we had so a. It's worth, a it's worth mentioning with that as well. The the, the really useful thing there was we, uh, we had a great working relationship with the client. What we're able to do is kind of deliver, say, 70% of the functionality, launch earlier. So we launched with the Euros. The original expectation was around launching for the Premier League season, which is the kind of real. Um, I guess that's where the, the, the players tend to go. So we had this opportunity. We had a sort of a customer who really wanted to work with us. So we launched early with 70% of functionality, took all that performance metrics, all those kind of bugs and things, and then we're able to relaunch as well, which was super useful and kind of takes supplier and, and the customer there really as well. Yeah. So obviously a couple of key things with that. Fixed dates. Uh, you know, the Euros were fairly fixed and the Premier League was fairly fixed. Uh, we couldn't change those. We had to work around those. And actually now with Pick 7, which we'll talk about in a bit, uh, that was launched for for Cheltenham, uh, which is next week. Um, so we had yeah. to be had to be ready for that as well. Um, yeah, and then uh, yeah, Italy and Germany launch in uh, sort of late 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 summer as well. So relatively short timescales, particularly being, given that the international service was built kind of from scratch, um, mm. and the uh, and, and, and the UK service was was re- relaunched. Yeah, it's not bad. Four, four services in one year, effectively with a brand new team as well. Um, so for us, it was a. Uh, our first foray effectively into providing a managed service, um, typically a consultancy, so this was a, a big step for us and it's something that's proved really popular. Um, so challenges, what do we have then? We mentioned before, isn't it, a pre-existing app. Um, we had uh, a bit of a mixed bag. We had some PHP in there. We had some Java in there. Uh, by no means was this all stuff 12 factor. It was written many years ago. Um, and I think one of the reasons why we ended up with this work is because it's not necessarily Skybet and Gaming's core product. Um, a very very focused company on their on their products, and that's things like sports betting and things. So so we we inherited this application uh, and a set of challenges. Uh, some more of those. So zero downtime. So we could not take the service down when we were doing releases. So um, obviously that will influence some of the kind of aims we'll go to in a second. Um, we want to be able to run it very very cheaply. So uh, Skybetting and Gaming previously ran this within their own data centers, um, and often you'll find when a company comes to look at the cloud and things they. The cost is very, it's much more visual, even if it's not necessarily more or less. It's kind of in your face. You get the bill every month. Um, so we want to make sure it was run for a low cost. And uh, Scabbit and Gaming are a company who have a, a very mature uh, service uh, uh, orientated kind of uh, culture there. So they have a lot of third, pli- uh, third party suppliers who deliver services for them. Uh, and they've got quite um, challenging functional, non functional requirements and things that we had to adhere to. So we knew. Um, not that they'd be a tough customer by that, but they had high standards. Um, and there's also some, some regulatory um, stuff around there. So sports betting is a heavy regulated industry. Um, perhaps not so much as uh, gambling and thing. Uh, sorry, as banking, but 
it's, um, it's still got lots of different requirements that we had to, to make sure we'd fulfill. Um, so after kind of having looked through the challenges, having a chat with Sky, we thought, all right, what, what are the aims? So we discussed low cost. Um, we first and foremost, we wanted to go with AWS for this. Uh, at the time, we felt, uh, looking at what was available, we felt it was the safest choice for us. It was also a choice that's popular with the customer because they've got uh, experience with it as well. So should this engagement go south, they could take over uh, running of, uh, of the service as well. Um, we also wanted to leverage, we didn't want to build everything from scratch, so we didn't want to build our own MySQL clusters and things like that, so we leveraged stuff like RDS and things. Um, and we wanted, from a cost basis, we wanted to kind of lever uh, leverage the latest technology, so that's all around, uh, basically, us using things like containers versus virtual machines, and so the virtual machine argument was for physical machines a long time ago. So we knew we got a costing sort of set aside. We had reliability, so we wanted to be able to this was very much um, a very important thing for us as a company because it, it, it kind of set aside, okay, now you know we're, we're, our reputation is on the line. We're delivering a service. We're not just uh, delivering people into businesses on projects. It's a very public and visible thing. So we knew it wanted to be reliable. We knew it wanted to be able to fail over easy as well, which is a key thing. Um, and we'll probably go into it in a second, but Super 6 is non-functional uh, requirements. It was a, it's a, the, the load profile is very, very, very demanding. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, secure, obviously. Um, we're not storing uh, credit card data with this service, um, but we still wanted the application to be uh, very secure. Obviously, a breach would be uh, very damaging to uh, reputation for both companies. So we've got a, a very good uh, SDL pre SDLC process, which allows us to kind of guarantee the quality of what we're putting out there. Um, and we've got a secret management system um, through Vault in there as well. Uh, and finally, uh, for that slide, the continuous delivery was a key thing. We knew we wanted to, uh, we, we often go into customers and we, we work with them to kind of work in an agile way and use the latest techniques. We had to really sort of uh, eat our own dog food on this sort of stuff. We wanted to be able to sure exactly as we would you know, do and a lot of us have experienced, we want to be able to demonstrate that to the customers as well. Um, what other aims? So I'll flick through these. Basically automation, obvious, um, really, uh, we, we didn't, we couldn't afford a large overhead on the team, so we wanted to be able to run it with a very small team. So I think the original team for Super 6 was six people, I think. Okay. So um, pretty small team, uh, everything automated. No surprises, so um, you're in a lot of trouble if you were to build something manually. Uh, everything through the tool set, rinse and repeat kind of thing, uh, so we could get maturity into our, our flows. And finally, the key one, this is, this is the thing for me. So... Slight cheating somewhat, I used to work at Skybit in Gaming, I used to be head of the operations team there, so I knew what a good supplier of a service uh, that we hooked into looked like, and I knew what uh, a bad one looked like. So what we wanted to do, what we decided to do from the offset was a completely transparent service, so uh, full access to our Jira, our monitoring, absolutely everything. So when there's a problem, if in the unfortunate event we haven't picked up on it and the customer does pick up on it, that whole process from start to finish of kind of resolution that problem is, is completely transparent. And some, some people will relish that and they'll get involved and they'll participate in you running that service. Sometimes they go, great, that's great, I trust you, but I'll kind of leave you to it because I've got other things to do. Um, but re regardless, um, in all of our uh, projects of this ilk we've done since, we, we kind of try and run it in a very transparent way, um, which, had I been in my shoes previously, would have been a refreshing change. Um, cool, yeah, so high-level components. We talked about uh, the layers before. It's a relatively simple application for Super 6. Um, so we had a PHP front end, um, we had a leaderboard written in Java, uh, a calculation engine, so Super 6 being a predictions game, every Saturday you'd have um, everyone would put in their predictions before a certain time, the games would be played and then the calculation would occur afterwards depending on uh, when the winning goal was scored and what the correct scores predicted were. Um, there's some other aspects of that I probably won't go into today, uh, social authentication, uh, we have Redis caches, and we kind of use our uh, persistent data through to MySQL. Um, so that kind of covers the high-level components. Not a complex stack and probably quite common. Um, so high-level infrastructure. So we mentioned AWS. Uh, we want everything to be repeatable. We want to use automation. So CloudFormation was really important for us. Um, reuse of that cloud formation so if we invested the time to build this stuff we use it for absolutely every change so immutable server model uh, completely destroy and rebuild um, th this talk is quite focused on super six but that's allowed us to effectively uh, repeat this for the other three products we launched so for italy germany and for the pick seven products as well we we're able to use that time invested 
um, a few tweaks here and there and we're able to completely build up environments from scratch again. Um, we, it's an interesting thing, people, um, one of the common things that will come up is, you know, why, why do you use uh, CloudFormation versus Terraform? At the time, CloudFormation was the right choice. Subsequent projects we've done, some of them have used Terraform. There's pros and cons of each. Um, I'll probably go into a little bit more on, on CloudFormation in a second. Uh, and finally, Docker Auto Scaling Group. So um, I mentioned before the load's really, really spiky. So it's just making sure that we could scale to the, the, the correct level to serve this traffic. Um, yeah, so STLC. Um, so this, this goes back to my previous point, which was we needed to run this in a completely transparent way. And we wanted to be able to do it in a way that we felt was demonstrative of, of what we believe in, you know, kind of our ethos and our values. So we, we decided for this squad, for this product, we wanted to work in a scrum band style fashion. So that's a, a effective sprint length of around every two weeks. Um, we had the fortune of being geographically very close to our customer. Uh, and this meant that they'd participate in things like our stand-ups um, and retros. And so all of our agile ceremonies, we had the customer in effectively as the product owner. Um, and we worked really collaboratively on that stuff. Um, that allowed us to sort of manage expectations, there were no kind of surprises, um, and costs and timescales, you know, there's no bills at the end of the month that nobody was expecting. And so with that stuff, we don't, we don't try and make any money on the AWS side of the thing. The customer uh, is sent basically the bill from, uh, straight from Amazon as part of that kind of managed service. Um, yeah, so we... we one of the key things, and I'll go into it on the next slide, or perhaps Matt will cover it in the next slide as well, is uh, usage around the physical board, which we can go over, and kind of how that, uh, how that works. Yeah, so just, just one other point on that uh, previous slide, was around the, um, so working together with the customer. So we had a, we had a really good view of, of what was going on. So we were able to, to plan out what the, what the service was doing, how we were going to build the service, but also we were able to work with them on when we were going to have calls to action, when we were going to have things going on. So we could run at a, at a really low base rate. I think we saw the four servers we ran in the background uh, for most of the time. And then on a Saturday morning, there'd be a call to action at, at, at I don't know, 11 o'clock, and the program would start at 12 o'clock, and then the game would start at 3 o'clock. So we knew that at 5 to 11, we'd have to scale up to this level, and at 5 to 12, we scaled to this level. So we're always sort of slightly ahead of the curve um, because we... The spikes we saw weren't, um, you know, it, it would ramp up gently over a, a three or four minute period. It was, it would ramp up, and one second there would be 100 logins a second. The next second it'd be 350. So it was a, you know, really, really spiky service. Mm. Um, so it was good to have that that integration between between us. The um, the product owners sat with our team, so we had a team on site in, in our Infinity Works office in Leeds. Uh, the the Skybit guys were sat on site with us, and it was very much one team with, uh, with sort of one one goal. It's a, it's, a, it's a funny one about the load. I'm, I'm sure others see this as well. We had, we had two triggers for that really spiky load. One was push notifications, which are great to an extent. Um, so as soon as everyone got a push notification, all of a sudden logins would spike. A few minutes later, predictions would start coming in. Um, big, uh, more, uh, I guess more surprising than that was, if anyone's ever watched uh, Sky Sports News, uh, Jess Stelling, who does the sort of coverage of uh, soccer on a Saturday and things, as soon as he mentions it, it's way bigger than a push. So as soon as he mentions, have you got your Super 6 predictions in, then it's like belt, belt and braces, the traffic's coming, and you've got about a 60-second window when pretty much everyone in that category will log on. So it's, it's really interesting, and it's very, uh, it is very spiky. So we hit, we hit the usual problems. I'm sure some people in this room have hit around uh, the time it takes for Amazon to auto-scale stuff like the ELBs, for instance. They simply can't scale fast enough. So we have to do things like pre-warming these uh, sets of services so that we know we can take the load ahead of time. The uh, last thing we want to do is, is miss the boat because once, once those people have tried, if he says it five minutes before time and our ELB is still scaling up, it's not, it's not really going to work for us. Yeah. So, uh, so the boards then. Um, so obviously we see the combination of uh, sort of refiner and monitoring around the outside. We have the, the actual number of services on the, or servers running on the, on the boards as well. Um, Thankfully, all the, I was checking on the previous slide, I should see if there were any red boxes on concourse, but there aren't. Everything's <laughs> green, which is how we like it. Um, Always that way, promise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have the full, the full build pipeline. Uh, and again, we'll talk a bit more about how we, how we integrate that with Jira and how we integrate that with the, the service management. Um, so the boards we have, we have sort of general physical boards. This is how we like to run things with, the, with all the different stages, ins and out, all the way through. Uh, we have a very clear goal for what the, uh, what the sort of, the, uh, so we talked about sort of scrum balance, the way of working, but we'll have a two-week iteration, what we want to, or, or a one-week in some case, what we want to get through in that period of time, what we want to achieve, um, and then everybody in the team has that has that clear goal. Obviously, the team sit close to the board, and we have a have to stand up frequently to uh, to, to go through that. 
Um, and then, yeah, it's very visible what's what's going on. We're just in the process of moving to a to a new office at the moment, and and this sort of thing, yeah, the same setup for all the teams we've got working from offices mm. is is one of the one of the key outputs we want to, to have because it's worked. It has worked really well for. Yeah, it's, for it's this funny thing. actually, given where we are, physical location does play a huge part. Um, people being able to visualise the systems they're kind of working on. Great example, it through that window, you feel like you are part of what is being delivered at the time versus yeah. a remote system that's the end of an SSH tunnel or something. Yeah. Um, so low level tech won't focus on this too much uh, we've got Alassian in there we've got Slack in there Vagrant for local development we're using Concourse CI which I'll talk about next uh, there's some Docker there's some Rancher and some Vault in there to actually uh, deliver our service so CI um, we use Concourse um, now we've I think possibly like many in this room we've all had bad experiences with Jenkins at some stage the server that nobody wants to touch um, we, we desperately didn't want that so we thought, okay, we want a server that we can redeploy easily. We want a server that uses a technology, the same technologies that we want to work with, so containerization. Uh, and we want to define the configuration of our jobs with alongside our repositories. So the configuration all lives in a single place. Um, this you know, perfectly fit um, the, uh, the workflow for us. Uh, it's an ideal tool for that. I'm aware Jenkins 2 has come along, and I had experience with it, but for us at the time... Uh, that was an excellent um, sort of opportunity for us, to, for, for us to kind of make that jump to something unfamiliar. And Concourse was unfamiliar to us at the time. Subsequently, we've used it a lot to, uh, uh, to a great extent. And it looks, it looks quite pretty as well on the boards, which everyone always likes. <laughs> um, yeah, so we integrate with Slack. Uh, I mentioned that kind of collaborative, transparent ele element of it. Uh, that uh, also involves uh, their teams, their support desk teams and their engineers also connecting to a shared Slack room we've got going. Uh, and so do our systems as well. So when a system does a backup or a system scales, it will report that out into Slack. People can kind of communicate and collaborate, comment on uh, the kind of actions that have gone through. Uh, another kind of key to us running this in a transparent way. We also actually have interactions around being able to roll back and finalise releases as well through Slack, uh, should we so wish. Um, although most people do tend to kind of load up the uh, concourse GUI and do it that way. Um, um, Foundations on AWS, it's not going to be groundbreaking really using AWS. A lot of people do. Uh, the biggest one for us was team skill set and then making that transferable to the, the, the customer as well. Um, consistent cloud formation. Uh, we, cloud formation was hard. It was a horrible long JSON file. It's since got better. You can use YAML now. Originally, when you used to submit a change, uh, it didn't tell you what it was going to do. So it'd be like, I've got that config. I'm going to apply it. And then you just kind of pray and hope that you'd written it right. Um, it does now warn you, so it's got the, of the last six months, eight months, it's had this change preview, so it's say I'm going to change that firewall port, and that makes, that makes it a lot more comforting to do, <laughs> especially if you're on call. Yeah. Um, yes, Terraform I mentioned before, should we, we, we could have done, uh, should we have, possibly not at the time, but maybe we would if we were to redo this again. Um, we've got Docker and Rancher in there, uh, I won't spend too much time on, uh, on Docker, I'm sure there's been quite a few talks here about it. Um, we love everything running as a container. We love being able to kind of have an object which we can guarantee how it will run in any environment. Um, we're running that on top of uh, Rancher OS, which is just a lightweight. It used to be 27 meg uh, OS. I think it's a bit more bloated than that now. Uh, and we orchestrate all of that through Rancher server itself. So um, at the time we did this, um, we had a look at Kubernetes and there's a few problems with it at the time. Uh, it was over a, uh, over a year ago when we first started doing that kind of initial investigation now. Um, so we went with Rancher because it was, it was most feature complete for what we wanted at the time. Uh, and it served us really well. It's less complex. Uh, it's a lot easier to onboard a team and start delivering a product faster. It's not necessarily got that learning curve that uh, Kubernetes had. Swarm was nowhere at this stage. Um, and ECS feels a bit uh, token at times. It's, uh, it, it, it's certainly when we looked at it then, it wasn't necessarily quite as... Uh, uh, as fully featured as we hoped. And the good thing about Rancher as well, it's got a, a powerful API, we can manipulate it easy, uh, and the guys over there are really uh, collaborative as well. Um, they've done loads of stuff with us, um, completely for free, just in a kind of collaborative nature. So uh, that was really good. And finally, we use a lightweight Alpine Linux. So it's small, it's fast, a lot of people do. Um, starting to see it uh, do quite well in things like we're security regard and things, because it's small footprint. Um, yeah. Um, Operational procedures are important ones. Yeah. 
but we've only got three minutes left, so it'll be a very quick <laughs> we one. We have, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so really, this is we, we have we have everything written down. Everything's in confluence. It's very much a case of um, only what's necessary and, and, and sufficient yeah. to do the job. So we don't have lots and lots of documentation. We don't have lots of big architecture uh, documents. We can see this. We share it with Skybet. They can see it as well. They can contribute to it. Um, if we have something that goes wrong or something that's a challenge, then everybody's got access to that. And, and this is used. I mean, we only have a very small support team that, uh, that operates the services, sort of two or three people at most. Um, yeah. But it's um, but it's there. Should anything and, and all the all the stuff is in the uh, all, uh, everything we need is in that uh, in that run book. Yeah, we even have like a run book for I think for changing the uh, voicemail or something like that on the uh, on the on call phone. Um, call scaling. I'll skip through given the time. So scaling, we use auto scaling, but we do pre um, for the scaling point of view, we trigger that, and that's simply because auto scaling isn't fast enough. Kind of mentioned before, so we do trigger that uh, ahead of time. Um, I think in the future we'll probably make that predictive do predictive analysis on the traffic as it comes in uh, to trigger it um i think that's kind of the next level for that um monitoring i'd love to talk about monitoring hobby hobby of mine but uh i won't go into it today we use prometheus grafana uh, kibana and elasticsearch for our logging uh, awesome tools all free could have used splunk would have been popular with the team but it's uh it's unfortunately insanely expensive for us as well um so we've got some lovely dashboards kind of saw on the screens before um, through those, we kind of have all of our business metrics collated, all of our technical metrics collated, health status, uh, makes for a great uh, instant way to, to track the performance of the service from a customer's point of view and from a, uh, an operational point of view. Um, and then finally, um, logging goes into Elk, kind of mentioned before. Uh, we've found it's okay. Um, I think we, we probably prefer Splunk, given our experience, but uh, it's completely free and we support the open source software more than we would something that's blunk. So, appreciate it. Run through it a little bit fast at the end there. Uh, maybe a minute or two for questions. <laughs> no? Oh, we? Well, let's go back to monitoring. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Uh, so you Sorry, yeah. That's wrong for you. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to ask, you mentioned scaling up the ELB. Yeah. How have you automated it? Uh, you so there's, uh, I think with the ELB, there was, uh, there was two things. We can send a large amount of traffic through it, which will cause it to auto-scale up. Um, that was stage one. Stage two was having a nice conversation with our EBS account manager uh, where they agreed to uh, fix it for us at a higher level. So we've, we've, we've done both things uh, with that, um, although I'll probably get in trouble now for saying that they've done that. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, one down the front. Did you get any pushback on your choice of CI system from a customer? Anything like that? No, not really. I mean, they, 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 they wanted us... They're not too bothered about the tools we use to do it. Um, they are familiar with us and they know what we can do, so... So people um, can be a bit more precious about that than other parts of the infrastructure if, if they've got to then use it in the future and yeah I mean they're, they're, I don't, I don't think they have we'd love for them to be able to take this stuff if I mean we'd rather not we'd rather run it for them such as the engagement yeah. but we'd love for them to take the stuff off us um, we've documented it well we've got configuration to rebuild it from scratch so I think we're probably comfortable with it in that respect cool just time for one more anyone nope okay Ed Matt thank you very much thank you, thank you.